Hey guys, just give me one moment, okay? For some reason. Okay. It is not, it is not recognizing the camera. So guys, my apologies. I, I'm not pretty sure if I will be able to use a camera, but I'm here, okay? So let me go ahead and share the screen with you. Just bear with me. Let me see, I'm going to try again and I will do it again. There you go. So can you see my screen, guys? Yeah. Perfect, great. So that's me. <laughs> and just give me a second, just uh, let me open up here the, the, the platform, right? So we can have access to the platform. <clears throat> And also, I'm going to open your list. Remember that we need to pass the attendance, right? So uh, I can have an idea of the students that are available in the class. Bear with me. Okay, so we ha we are still, you know, um, with uh, two minutes you know, um, ahead, right? Tenemos ahí dos minutitos de más. But uh, let's wait for the rest of the uh, students, right? Or your classmates to join, okay? okay. Ya habían estado conmigo antes, no, verdad? No. No, okay. No. Very good. No problem. No. Great. Okay, so guys, uh, my name is uh, Marcelo Ortiz, but well, my full name is Claudia Marcela Ortiz de Doñan, right? But I go by Marcela Ortiz de Doñan, or just Marcelo Ortiz, okay? Así que welcome to the class. Um, well, in my case, I have a, a major, well, I have a BA in uh, English teaching, right? And I also studied the uh, didactics uh, course that is um, given or taught by INSAFORP. And I've been teaching English since 2012, right? So that's a little bit about me. And um, this program, the one that you are at right now, it's great because it allows you to study and to do things on your own rhythm, right? And no worries, right? Um, we're going to be learning new things together. So please bear with me, guys. I'm going to make sure the camera is working, okay? So déjeme asegurarme que la cámara esté bien porque uh, for some reason it doesn't allow me to show you um, my, you know, um, my face, right? So bear with me. Give me a couple of minutes, okay? Okay. Thank you. Okay, I'm back. Just bear with me. And I'm going to add the background here. There we go. And I'm going to put it away from my face so you don't see me directly like this. Same. What about 
here. Sorry, guys, I don't know what happened, but for some reason it stopped, you know, recognizing the um, the camera. There we go. So you will see a little bit of me. I'm here. <laughs> so hi, this is me without makeup, right? That picture is with makeup, and this this is the the version without makeup. So uh, nice to see you guys. Welcome again to your class. And well, some of you have already, you know, um, uh, joined right the WhatsApp group. And just in case if you are not there. No worries, I'll go ahead and uh, send you the link if there's, you know, someone needing, you know, the link. So um, what are some of the group rules that we have to keep? Well, it's important, guys, that we always keep to the purpose or we always stick to the purpose, right, of the group. So remember, if you have any question, if you have, you know, uh, doubts related to your um to your platform or you know the process that you have with uh, Inglés Corporativo, you can go ahead and ask you know the the right people. For example, in this case, if you have a question about about the platform, so what I always recommend is for you to write down the number of the exercise and then to bring it to the class so we can you know resolve the um, the the, the um, exercise together or to answer you know those uh, questions or clarify doubts on the other hand if you have a question related to your access any you know inconvenient with the platform or something related to your um to your process right so you can go ahead and ask the person in charge of your process, right? Uh, bear with me. Let me put the cameras here and the little thing here. Okay, here we go. And be polite and respectful to each other, right? So remember, we are different worlds, so we think in different ways. And let's go ahead and respect, you know, others' uh, opinions, right? All questions will be answered during class. Como así, Marce? Well, in this case. I prefer, you know, if you have a question and 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 if I had the chance to answer that question here during class and to give you examples, so that's a lot better for me to be able to explain myself, right? It's not the same to explain something through a, a, a text, right? And if I have you, all of you, if I have all of you, you know, during the class here, it's a lot easier for me to be able to explain myself. And also remember, whenever we have a question, another person, you know, might have it as well. So let's go ahead and take advantage, you know, of the time. And we have, you know, that uh, section of the class that I just leave aside for questions and doubts. Um, what else? Well, as you know, your homework and evaluation, everything is in the platform, right? So it is necessary for you to get or to reach 80% on a score, right, of your homework and evaluations, right? So what does that mean, Marce? Well, as you know, because I know that you are in pre-advanced uh, pre three, right? As you know, everything is in the platform. All what you have to do is to work the different exercises that we have there, right? Um, also, it says homework, um, you can find them in the platform. Well, homework assignments, I'm sorry, you can find them in the platform. And it is recommend recommendable to work on them just right after the class. But of course, I mean, if you cannot do it right after the class because it's already nine o'clock and probably some of you might go to bed at that time, what you can do is to do it whenever you have the chance, right? Ah, okay, uh, Evis, right? Evis, no worries. Thank you so much for letting me know, okay? No worries, I already uh, read your message. Okay, now um, all the homework and topics, right, that we have already covered need to be completed in the platform, right? It, can you raise your hand if you're new in the, um, I mean, in this type of classes? 
or an English corporativo. Any new student? No? No tenemos a estudiantes nuevos. Okay. Great. Even better. <laughs> Give me a moment. Okay, we have already a lot of people here. We have 20. Okay, cool. Bueno, 21 plus me, 22. Um, what else? Um, also, if you need some um, handout, right? Remember that in the platform, you will be able to find your manual. You can download it so you can have access to it. I don't know if you do it every single month, but I always recommend to have your um, your um, manual, you know, handy whenever you need it. So, uh, Marce, how do I get the um, the manual? So you have to come here to this tab where it says students manual, right? And you will be able to access to it. So here we have from one to 36, right? And you will be able to find all the information that we're going to need for these particular curves, okay? So there are plenty of exercises. I'm going to try to cover all of them. Some of them are already included as exercises in the platform, okay? So here you have, as you can see, we have a lot of things that we're going to be covering and working with. Okay, so this is going to be like, like the introductory class, but no worries, we're going to take advantage of the time as well. As you know, um, week one, we work in sections one and two. Week uh, two, we work in section three and the midterm exam. Week three, we work in section four. And during week four, we work in section five and the final exam. OK, now, of course, if you want to go ahead and work in the next section, let's say, for instance, that we're working in section three and you said, um, teacher, I already finished section three. I think I'm going to finish the midterm, the midterm exam. More than welcome. No problem at all. OK, what else? Uh, well, some things that we need to remember. I can see that you have already done this, so it's just you know, general is are just generalities, right? That that I'm just rambling here, but in case we forget, remember to use um, the silence option or the silence button uh, whenever you access. Try to enter your full name. Why? Because remember that you have been registered as in your Dewey, right? So whenever we um, check your attendance, whenever we get uh, the minutes that you were connected, so pretty much we're getting that info with the name that you have there, right? Oh my goodness, there is a Claudia Marcela over here, but that's my name, Claudia Marcela, but I'm Ortiz Adunyam, okay? So I have a, a namesake. Do you know that? ¿Sabían cómo decir tocayo en inglés? You say namesake. Oh. <laughs> I have a namesake over here. Okay, I'm going to type it here on this on the chat. Namesake, namesake. That's Tokayo. Uh, so um, then also turn on your camera. It's very important. I mean, it's not the same, guys. It's not the same if you uh, do not see the other person, right? It gives you like that. Um, I don't know, a uh, feeling that you are there, right? Also, active participation. There will be some time for you to participate. There will be some time for me to explain something, right? And teacher, what is your methodology? Generally, guys, what I do is that I present, we practice together, and then your turn to go ahead and uh, practice alone. Okay, that's um, how I uh, generally work. Remember, if you have a question, you need to raise your hand, right? So we don't talk over the other students. Always, um, you know, be respectful one another. Policies, uh, well, in this case, you have to work in the platform. We begin today, January 18th. 18th. Classes are from 8 to 9 p.m. You need to have your camera on. The duration, you know, of the class is 60 minutes and you need to work in the platform, right? Um, that's all, and at the end, you will get your diploma, okay? So let's begin, guys, because time is gold, right? Tiempo es oro, and we need to take advantage of it. It's not principiante one, right? It's pre-avanzado modulo tres, sorry. I got, I, I made a mistake. And this is going to be your session one. There is a video, okay, for you to, uh, for us to have, you know, an introduction uh, on the uh, unit. This is going to be um, 
a very, you know, interesting unit. Why? Because we're going to talk about hypothetical situations. Okay. Hypothetical situations in English are, are not complicated, but they are not easy. However, we need to simplify things, right? And how do we simplify things in English when they are difficult? Well, we create patterns and we try to build, you know, our sentences in a way that it's going to be easier for us to remember what the things, what, I mean, what um, we need to include within your sentences. Okay, so there's a video here and just let me make sure that I'm sharing the um, sound. Ahora vamos a subir volumen. Give me a moment. Okay, so here we have. Vamos a probar primero si ustedes escuchan. Let me know if you can listen. Hey guys, you're not going to believe this. Yes. Okay, okay perfect. So let's begin again. Hey guys, you're not going to believe this. I just heard a story about this campground. What do you mean? What about it? I was just at the bathhouse. I had taken a shower and was brushing my teeth when this woman came in with her daughter. She, she was telling her the story, so I listened in. What's so interesting about this old campground? It isn't scary, is it? Because scary stories freak me out. Don't be such a chicken, Molly. Come on, Ellen, tell us the story. Well, this... Give me a moment, because I can see that in the section, the slide, it's moved. Just let me move it a little bit down so you can see better. There you go. Going to believe this. I just heard a story about this campground. What do you mean? What about it? I was just at the bathhouse. I had taken a shower and was brushing my teeth when this woman came in with her daughter. She, she was telling her the story, so I listened in. What's so interesting about this old campground? It isn't scary, is it? Because scary stories freak me out. Don't be such a chicken, Molly. Come on, Ellen, tell us the story. Well, this all took place many years ago. Before it was turned into a campground, this land had been a farm. It was owned by a young couple named Theodore and Dolly McShane. Mr. McShane had inherited the land from a relative. So what's so scary about that? I thought this was supposed to be a spooky story. I'm getting to that, just wait. The McShanes were wonderful people. Friendly, sociable, everybody loved them. And they really, really loved each other. Everybody could see it. When they were walking down the street together, they always held hands. When he was working in the field, he always picked her wild flowers and brought them home to her in the evening. Oh, that's so <laughs> sweet. Oh no, then something bad happened, right? Yes. One day, as Theodore was coming home from town, he saw smoke in the distance. It had been a very hot, dry summer, so fires were a real danger. And was there a fire at the farm? Yes. And as he was hurrying down the road, the smoke was getting thicker and thicker, blacker and blacker. All he could think about was his wife. But by the time he got home, the house was completely in flames. He screamed Dolly's name over and over, but she didn't answer. She was in the house? She died in the fire? Yes. It was a terrible tragedy. What happened then? Well, the poor man went crazy. He refused to believe that Dolly had died. For months, he searched for her. He walked all day and night through the countryside and through the town, searching, searching, and in his hands, he always carried a bouquet of wild flowers for his poor, dead bride. 
So, how did it turn out? What finally happened to him? That's the spooky part. It's a mystery. People saw him less and less. And then, Theodore McShane just disappeared. No one ever saw him again. But the people who live here say he still walks the forest at night looking for his lost bride. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to frighten you ladies. I was making my rounds and wanted to see if everything is all right. Yes, a park ranger, of course. Yes, everything's fine. Ellen was telling us a spooky story when you came by. Campfire stories, huh? That's always fun. Well, okay then. I'll let you get back to it. Thanks for checking on us, and sorry about the screams. Oh, that's okay. I'm used to it. Hey, in the morning, you ladies should take a look down that path. There's a field full of wildflowers in there in bloom right now. Very pretty. Oh, that's good to know. We'll do that. Thanks. Here's some for you to enjoy. In case you need anything, I'll be at the ranger station. Thanks again. Oh, what's your name? I'm Ted. Theodore, really. But my friends call me Ted. Ted McShane. You have a good night. Okay, guys, so what do you think about the video, right? Do you have a spooky story to tell? Have you ever experienced, you know, this type of uh, situations, right? What do you think? Spooky story. Okay, so whenever we tell a spooky story, it's probably something that is going to make you feel frightened or someone else, right, um, might feel frightened about it or it's something scary, right? Spooky, I would say it's kind of synonym, it's a synonym of scary, right? So had it happened to you before? Have you ever experienced, you know, a situation like that? Yes or no? No. No. Okay. We have heard, right? We can uh, listen to people telling us those type of stories, but generally, right, it's like, um, not to me, but I have heard. Right? So guys, just before, <laughs> before anything happens, right, um, I would like to, um, to pass the attendance, right, to spur with me. I'm going to open here the... Um, the list. Give me a moment. And tell me, did all of you have a, well, did all of you access to the WhatsApp group or hay alguien que haga falta todavía del grupo de WhatsApp? Uh, would be better if you ask to all of us right, raising our hand if we get it into the WhatsApp. Oh, no, no problem. No, it's okay. I mean, uh, solo con que alguien me diga, me teacher, I haven't, that's that's fine. The thing is that right now, <laughs> that's the reason why I'm not looking at the, at the, at the screen. Uh -huh. I think I found your list. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay, I think it's this one, but give me a moment. Yes, I found it. 
Very good. So let's begin. Alba Dir Portal Diaz. My teacher. Hello. Thank you. Thank you, Alejandra Elizabeth Mendoza Arias. Alejandra Elizabeth Mendoza Arias. Eh, Ana Francisca García Nieto. Carlos Antonio Present. González Nuila. Present teacher, Ana Francisca. Presente. Thank, Thank you. you. Cecilia Elizabeth Guardado Gutiérrez. I'm here. Thank you. Eh, Claudia Marcela Linares Urquía. Here. Thank you, Diego Anthony Melendez Mayen. Present. Thank you. You have to say present or here. ¿Verdad? Una de las dos. Present or here. Okay, present. Or here. Una de las dos está bien. Eh, Dina Esmeralda Ayala López. Eliu Fuentes Velarde. Present. Present. Okay. Thank you. Eh, Erasmo Perla Mendoza. Present, teacher. Thank you. Jaime Dagoberto Barrera Guzmán. Present. Thank you. Jenny Lisette Campos Martinez. Here. Thank you. Jose Carlos Rodriguez Linares. Present. Thank you. Jose Francisco Peña Peña. Here I am. Thank you. Jose Isaías Portillo Ramos. Eh, José Jovito Torres Amaya. Present. Thank you. Mayra Lorena Portillo de Perla. María Azucena Ayala de Flores. Present. Thank you. Eh, Marta Estela Díaz Sánchez. Marta Ruz Enríquez Reyes. Here. Thank you. Marvin Joseph Salazar Alas. Neidy Ibis Méndez Albeño. Rafael. Thank you, Ibis. Rafael Antonio Morales Martínez. Present. Thank you. Eh, Rebeca Estefanía Pereira Flores. Present. Thank you. Rodrigo Antonio Meléndez Morales. Rodrigo Daniel Meléndez Mayen. Present. Thank you. Rosa María del Milagro Pérez de Paz. I'm here. Thank you. Sandra Patricia Merino Moreno. Jensi Marrene León López. Y Zulma Beatriz Pérez Galdames. Present. Thank you so much. Okay, guys, thank you. Uh, remember, right, whenever Present. you hear your name, you have to um, go ahead and, and answer, right? Thank you. Okay, so, well, what happens here, guys? Um, the, the, the reason why, I guess, right, the reason why this uh, was introduced, right, is because probably we are going to talk a little bit about things that we cannot change in the past, right? So remember that uh, if you go to the platform, you will be uh, introduced to the uh, different topics that we're going to be covering, right? So here you have the manual. I strongly recommend for you to, oh, I don't know what happened, for you to um, have access to it, right? I que siempre bajar el manual just in case, right? As you can see, you have it here, okay? So we're going to be working with uh, these two units. And these units, I'm sorry, uh, they are interesting, by the way. So if you want to learn new words, new vocabulary things, um, you are going to learn, you know, a few things from here. Um, the name of this uh, lesson is Life's Little Lessons. Life's Little, li little Lessons, right? And we're going to be talking a little bit of life events. So... As you can see from the video that we watched, right? That was a, um, a life event, right? There are some things good or bad that happened to us that, you know, make us, I would say, grow professionally, personally, etc. So 
Uh, here you have, if you want to check out, you can go ahead and do it. El material que yo presento, pues, es prácticamente de acá, right? Así que you can feel free to have access to it. And uh, here, right, when it comes to the, uh, to the manual, remember, um, as I said before, some exercises are in the platform. For example, this listening exercise, you will find it here. Lo van a encontrar aquí. This is, it says listening exercise, important events. Listen to the three people describe important events in their lives, complete the chart. So you come here to the course, right? And you are going to be able to find that. If you go to live little lessons, you click on it, right? And there should be a listening exercise almost right at the end. So here you have, right? Instructions, listen to people describe their regrets, right? So some of them, we are going to work it, work them here. Some of them will be part of your homework, okay? Now, what else? Let's move on. So the, the very first objective here, guys, as, as you can see there, right, in this class, participants will listen to a conversation where time clauses are used in context. So time clauses, you know, are important to know, as you could hear from the video, right, they are there, okay? So here we have a conversation. That conversation you can find it in the um, in the platform as well, and it says I was really immature, right? I was really immature. So let's go ahead and practice the conversation. So I will need I would like to have a couple of volunteers, right? So you can help me to uh, you know read the conversation out loud. Now I'm going to read it first, and then if you raise your hand. Um, you can definitely help me to uh, read the conversation, okay? Give me a second. Um, some of you are texting, um, but I think I'm going to close it uh, because of the interruptions that we have. Okay, let's see. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Marvin. Solo estoy viendo lo, lo, que, lo que han puesto en el, en el grupo de WhatsApp porque no lo había leído. I'm sorry. Mm. Mm -hmm. Bueno, igual cualquier cosa, pues ahí está Paola también pendiente de ustedes. Thank you, Marvin. Uh, and thank you, Jose. Okay, so I will read it first. Yo lo leo primero and then you go, okay? Uh, so, what were you like when you were younger, right? Well, when I was a kid, I was kind of irresponsible. You? Really? What made you change? Graduated from high school. What do you mean? Well, until I graduated, I've never had any important responsibilities. Then I went to college. I know what you mean. I was really immature when I was a teenager. So what made you change? I think I became more mature after I got my first job and moved away from home. Once I had a job, I became totally independent. Where do you work? I worked for my dad uh, for my dad at the bank. Okay, wow, how independent. So let's go ahead and see Marvin. Please help me with the first um, uh, section and then Jose, you are going to continue, okay? Hey teacher. Mm -hmm. So what were you like when you were younger? When I was a kid, I was kind of irresponsible. You really? What made you change? That's very from high school. What do you mean? Well, until I graduated, I never had any important responsibilities, but then I went up to college. I know what you mean. I was really immature when I was a teenager. So what made you change? I think I become more mature after I got my first job and moved away from home. 
once I but a Joe, I become totally independent. Where did you work? I worked for my dad at the bank. Okay, guys, good job. Excellent. Thank you so much for your participation. And just let's go ahead and check some, uh, you know, um, pronunciation tips. So let's see, a younger, right? Young. No decimos young, sino que decimos young, right? It's like young, younger, right? Um, let's see, another one I've heard is um, mature. In mature, right? Mature in mature. Teenager, right? It's kind of similar to adolescent. You can say adolescent, adolescente, or teenager. Teacher, which one is more com which which one is more common? I would say teenager, right? Adolescent, we're talking about, you know, uh, a set uh, or a category, right? That is more like in psychology, I would say. Um, then, uh, what else? Let me see. Independent, right? Dependent, independent, right? Okay. And also, guys, remember, tip really quick. Whenever you have a word that ends in a consonant sound and you have a new, another word that begins with a vowel sound, like in this case, let me check. Uh, okay. This is an example. This is a perfect example. Okay. This is a perfect example. Moved away. So here we have two words. The first one ends with a consonant sound and the other one begins with a vowel sound. Right. So what do we do in this case? Yo no digo move or move it away. No. Right. So that's not correct. Entonces, ¿qué es lo que voy a hacer yo? Hay algo que se llama en inglés linking. Teacher, what is linking? Linking, guys, it's what allows you, right, to go ahead. Fíjense que como... Ibis me escribió a mí directo. Creo que todos los mensajes que estuve mandando le caían solo a ella. I'm sorry. Okay. So we have this specific thing in English, linking. So how do we how do we pronounce then these type of things, right? Entonces yo no digo move it away. Yo digo move the way. Move the way. Y move the way. Ahí hay un D sound at the end, right? Move the way. Once I had a job, I became totally independent, right? I worked. I worked, right? So we need to be very careful with the um, ED sound in the simple past verbs. Do you have any questions, guys, about the vocabulary words? Any, um, any question about the, um, the conversation? No se preocupe, ¿verdad? I'm here to clarify your doubts. I'm here to answer your questions. If I don't know the answer, I will look for it. Okay, yo la busco, pero you ask the question because actually that's the most important thing. So questions about the vocabulary? No vocabulary sure. words? Oh, yeah. Tell me. In me immature. Is, immature. Uh, inmaduro. Yeah, immature. Correct. Immature. Exactly. Mature is the opposite. Uh -huh. Okay. Thank Good. you. Good. You're uh, welcome. When we say a uh, kind of is like a algo de algo así responsable or what's been kind of? Oh, kind of. Okay. Um, like in the first sentence, right? I was kind of irresponsible, right? So that means that that particular quality was related to you. I was kind of. Algo así como decimos en español. Yo era algo irresponsable, ¿verdad? Eh, estaba un poco molesto. I was kind of angry, right? When uh, they started, you know, to talk about this. Um, I kind of like it. Dicen también, ah, creo que, creo que me gusta. I kind of like it, but not, you know, uh, completely. No del todo, pero I think I kind of like the activity, right? Kind of. 
Okay. And yes, actually, it, it may have different um, interpretations. Muy buena pregunta. Puede tener diferentes interpretaciones, ¿verdad? Pero sí, I was kind of irresponsible, right? Yo era algo así como irresponsable, ¿verdad? Creo que me gusta un poco la actividad. I think I kind of like it, right? Kind of. Okay. Any other question? No more questions. Es más, porque we're going to look. Tina teenager? What is the meaning teenager? Teenager. Teenagers are kids that are between 12 years old and 18 years old. Okay, so uh, you are a kid and then you become an adolescent or a teenager. So in Spanish, we say adolescente, right? So whenever you are between 12 years old and 18 years old, right, you are a teenager. Mm -hmm. And you is having. Young, yes, young. Mm -hmm. okay. It's mm -hmm. Correct. Anyone else? No? I love questions, guys. I love questions, okay? So if you have any question, don't worry. As I said before, that's why I'm here, okay? Now, guys, so we were talking a little bit about this kind of. Uh, I, I really liked the question because that's something that you know, um, people use in English a lot, right? So if you look for the word kind of, it says rather to some extent, often expressing vagueness or used as a meaningless filler, okay? ¿Qué es eso entonces? Es una muletilla. Un filler en inglés es una muletilla, okay? Entonces, uh, that's what it is in, in, in English, right? Expressing vagueness, okay? Expresa una idea vaga, right? Ah, I was kind of irresponsible. No del todo, pero vagamente lo fui, ¿verdad? En el sentido figurado de la palabra. No que era vago. <laughs> okay, then we have, what does it mean to say kind of in English, right? So it says you use kind of when you want to say that something or someone can be roughly described in a particular way. Marce, what is roughly? Que casi chispeadito, ¿verdad? Podemos decir que era algo irresponsable, pero no del todo, right? Entonces, como una cosa lleva a la otra, esta es mi forma en la que yo trabajo, chicos. If I'm reading something, me muevo a esa palabra, ¿y qué quiere decir esa palabra, right? So this is... Roughly. Roughly, right? So... Whenever you have questions, by the way, about pronunciation, if you type the word, como yo lo acabo de hacer, roughly, and then uh, meaning, it brings you here. No todas las palabras, pero la mayoría. You can listen to the pronunciation. Roughly. And here you can see how it is pronounced, right? Look. Roughly. So as you can see, you have a very uh, small box over here and you can see the woman's lips, right? And they uh, the, the movements, you know, they have. Roughly. 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 And, miren que más, tienen una forma más simple. You have a, uh, a, a, another way, right, to see, you know, um, the pronunciation, right? Visually, something different. And what else? Si usted me dice, no, teacher, es que muy rápido va, no entendí. And so you click here, you know, slower, right? And you click again. Roughly. And the lips move slower. Roughly. I'm sorry, slowly. slowly. <laughs> so that's the way you can use it, right? Some of them have the option for you to practice. Some of them, no, right? So roughly, what is the meaning of roughly? Right, let's go ahead and check. Sorry. It says, in a manner lacking gentleness. Ah, gentleness. O sea, que no es algo amable para sí mismo, right? So, in a manner lacking gentleness, harshly, una forma pesada de decirlo, 
okay? In a manner lacking refinement and precision. O sea, que cuando yo uso kind of, okay, estoy diciendo que es algo vago, superficialmente lo fui, verdad, etc. Entonces, es una muletilla. Por eso es que ustedes escuchan que lo usan en un montón. Si ustedes, listen to a sitcom, listen to your favorite series in, on Netflix, and you will be able to, to listen to this muletilla or filler a lot. Ah, I kind of like it. I feel kind of angry, okay? I feel kind of hungry, okay? I think it's kind of irresponsible, right, et cetera. Okay, so any other question, guys? Questions? No? Okay, very good. So let's move on to, well, this is just the introduction, right? Remember, we're talking about the introduction. So we are going to be able to find some, um, you know, uh, words, right, that will help us to understand things better. So if you go to your manual, let me open up your manual. If you go to your manual, it must, let's do something. We're going to download it right now. Para los que no lo hayan descargado, you can download it here, right? Solo esperemos a que tiene la barra, okay? Si no está en el grupo de WhatsApp, no worries. Ahorita les comparto el link, okay? There you have the link for the WhatsApp group, right? And um, if you have, right, um, any questions, you can leave your message there. Remember, if you have questions about the platform, we answer the questions during the class. So it's a lot easier for me to answer during the class. I'm a teacher, right? So I work in the school. So during the day, I'm pretty busy. Si me ven en línea es porque muy probablemente WhatsApp está abierto en la computadora, pero I'm not there. No estoy allí. So si de repente me preguntó, teacher, I have, you know, a question about the platform exercise 3.5. Y no le contesté porque probablemente no estaba WhatsApp abierto, pero yo no estaba ahí. So generally, guys, I answer the questions during class, ¿verdad? Vamos a descargar. Y lo vamos a dejar aquí en descargas, okay? And then we close it and we open it up, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and check here. Okay, so after the conversation, right, we can find this time closes, okay? Time closes, right, are important to know because they can help you, right, to describe events okay time clauses clauses i'm sorry help you to have a sequence whenever you are telling story whenever you are telling something right like in the story that you listened at the beginning of the class the introductory video in lesson one well section one so um some of the sentences that we can get from there are these ones, right? Before I had my first job, I was really immature. So as you can see there, we have two closes, right? One that contains the time close and we have the other one, right? So before, before what? Before I had my first job, what happened? I was really immature. After. After I got my first job, I became, ah, esa era la otra palabra, right? Became, become, es past, be, become, I mean, yeah, become, became, become. No, perdón, es past participle, ¿verdad? Es past participle. So I became more mature. Once I had a job, I became totally independent. The moment I moved away from home, I felt like a different person. As soon as I got my own bank account, I started to be more responsible. Until I graduated, I've never had any important responsibilities. And 
by the time I graduated from high school, I had already started working. Okay, so what are those phrases that we need to learn? Because actually that's extremely important, right? Um, let me do something here. Bye. Let's go here. So the phrases that I need you to um, keep in mind, right, are before, okay, after, once, the moment, as soon as, until, and by the time, by the time. Okay, so guys, these are very useful phrases. Okay, now do you have questions about the meaning of these or of any of these um, words, vocabulary words? Questions? No questions? No questions. No questions, right? Okay, so you know how to. I do have you... a question. Go ahead. What is the meaning of? by the time mm -hmm. some tiempo. okay good question by the time right so as you can see there by the time i graduated from high school right in español diríamos eh, para cuando me gradué verdad de, de bachillerato o en, en en el tiempo en el que yo me gradué verdad de bachillerato i had already started working yo ya había comenzado a trabajar Yo diría más para, para el tiempo que yo me gradué, ¿verdad? O para el momento en el que yo me gradué de bachillerato, ya había comenzado a trabajar. ¿Ok? So, by the time. Mm -hmm. By that specific time. ¿Ok? Mm -hmm. No sé si contesto su no. pregunta. Yes, thanks. Ok, you're welcome. And you're welcome. We, can, we can use that when future or just with past? No, that's, that's uh, something that I can... Uh, use in the in the future, right? Um, for example, by the time you finish, right? I'll be in the I'll be in the office, right? <clears throat> by the time you finish, I'll be in the office. Oops, pardon. I'll be <clears throat> in the office. For example, let's say that you were applying for a job, right? And you had an interview and they say, oh, okay, you know what? I need you to complete, you know, this form. And by the time you finish, I'll be in the office. So you can come and bring the papers to my office, okay? So remember that all of these uh, words, we're going to use them to express time, right? So it doesn't matter if it's, um, if it's past or future, right, you can go ahead and combine them, right? For example, I can say, uh, before I go to my English class, I'll have, right, I'll have to uh, cook breakfast, or I have to finish the homework, etc. So it could be past, or it could be, you know, uh, future, no problem. Okay, any other questions? With the, with the um, words that we have on the on screen? No, okay, very good. Let's continue then, okay? So it says, by the end of this lesson, participants will learn to use subordinated conjunctions, right? <laughs> um, the, the, the topic, guys, don't worry, it's not, um, uh, it's not something, Compli complex or complex, I, I would say, right? Um, sometimes, you know, probably we have doubts or we have, you know, our questions when we don't know how these type of things work in Spanish, because actually that can happen, right? Um, but I don't think it's the case. So let's see. Here we have, right? What is a coordinating conjunction, guys? Uh, when it comes to the coordinating conjunctions, right? Uh, Subordinating, I'm sorry, conjunctions are words or phrases that link a dependent clause 
to an independent close, right? That that's what they are. Okay. I'm going I'm going to share it with you. Okay. Aquí en el chat. Okay, there you have what a coordinating conjunction is. Y no se preocupe que ya lo voy a explicar. I'm going to share with you the examples, right? So, as I was saying, close. Teacher, what is a close? Because uh, ahí aparece una cláusula, sí. Yes, a close, guys, it's a set of words, right? That it's a unit, pongámoslo así. Es una unidad. That's a close, right? It's a sentence, digámoslo así, right? And pretty much, right, a close will contain a subject and a predicate. O en español decimos un sujeto y un predicado. Eso es una close, right? Close generally or traditionally, right, will contain or will consist of subject and predicate, right? Sujeto y predicado, ¿qué quiere decir eso? Que vamos a tener un subject y por lo menos va a haber un verbo, right? In that sentence, okay? But what happens when I have subordinated conjunctions, right? So when we have subordinated conjunctions, we have two. We have the dependent clause and the independent clause. La, la cláusula dependiente y la cláusula independiente, right? So we have two different clauses, right? And these two clauses, okay, are going to be expressing, por decirlo así. They will be expressing cause and effect. Causa y efecto, right? That's the reason why we have two of them, okay? Generally, they will be making reference of that, okay? Now, here, as you can see, we have clauses and we have two. Before I had my first job, I was really immature, right? After I got my first job, I became more mature. So in this case, one is going to be the cause and the other one is going to be the effect. For example, right? So I got my first job, okay? I got my first job and consequently, I became more mature. Why? Ah, uh, well, because you know what? I have to wake up very early. I have to take care of myself. I have to cook. I have to drive to my job or my office, right? I started, you know, paying my bills. I started, you know, being independent, right? So the cause was that, right? I already was irresponsible. I already was, you know, immature but something happened. And what is that? I got my first job, yay. So after I got my first job, there was uh, an effect. And what was that effect or what was that consequence? I became more mature. So in this case, it's something positive, right? So generally guys, we're going to uh, work with those two things in that way. Of course, this is just an introduction. I'm going to be talking about, about it a little bit more, right? Porque no es solo de venir, verdad, y darles esto y vaya, vayan a los breakout rooms. No, first we need to discuss, right? Generally, we go to the breakout rooms on Thursdays, right? So you can discuss and you can practice what we have studied uh, the, the first uh, three days. Um, after this, you have a knowledge check, right? And, it, and, and pretty much what you have to do is to put into practice, right? What you read from the conversation so you can have a better idea on how the clauses work. And it's as much the clauses with appropriate, informa ap appropriate information, right? So choose the best answer. So as you can see here in this exercise, what you will do is matching, right? The... Um, the two clauses. For example, if, if this one says, by the time I was 15, I didn't appreciate my country, my own country. I began to understand the value of money. I learned how to communicate better. I realized that I wasn't a child anymore. I had learned how to take care of myself, etc. Obviously, what do I recommend? 
read all the exercise because you can pick only one. Okay, so read all the exercise. And where can we find that? We come here and I think it's um, 1.4. Okay, so you come from 1.4 and please stay the time to read, right? So you can answer properly. Cuando cargue, ¿verdad? Aquí está. Entonces, uh, until I started working part-time, right? Remember, the options are all the same, right? The moment I got my first, uh, yeah, the moment I got my first paycheck, right? So what do you think what happened? What do you think happened? I'm sorry. The moment I got my first paycheck, just by reading the sentence, what do you think it's going to be the, the, the answer? The first one is... Um, the first one? Uh, please, no, okay. The first one, the exercise oh. one. Uh, please. Uh, it's like, yeah. Is I really say that I was a children anymore? I was a child anymore. Probably, uh -huh. that's a that's a very good guess, right? We will need to complete the whole exercise to find out, but that would be a very good guess. Why? Because I'm talking about, you know, be, becoming an adolescent or becoming a teenager, right? I'm not a child anymore, I'm a teenager now, right? So that would be a very good option, right? So all what we have to do, guys, is to read the sentence, right? And to match them based on the consequence, right? So what do you think happened, right? Uh, after that uh, sentence. So let's go ahead and work, you know, on this one, take it as homework, right, assignment. And we're going to discuss more information about time clauses tomorrow. Um, so right now I, I already, you know, um, have, well, I still have two minutes, okay? So I'm going to pass the attendance. Right, and tomorrow we're going to continue. But if you uh, can read, you know, some of the pages from the manual, at least the first one, right, that will help us a lot. So you can have a better idea on what we are going to be discussing during the class. Okay. Bye. Let's begin. Eh, Alba Dir Portal Diaz. Right here. Thank you, Alejandra Elizabeth Mendoza Arias. Ana Francisca García Nieto. Eh, Carlos Antonio González Present. Huila. Thank you. This all the time. Present. Thank you. Cecilia Elizabeth Guardado Gutierrez. Here. Thank you, Claudia Marcela Linares Urquilla. Here. Thank you, Diego Anthony Melendez Mayen. Dina Esmeralda Ayala López. Present, present. Thank you, Eliu Fuentes Velarde. Present. Thank you, Erasmo Perla Mendoza. Jaime Dagoberto. Present, teacher. Thank you, Jaime Dagoberto Barrera Guzmán. Present. Thank you. Uh, Jenny Lisette Campos Martinez. Present. Present. Thank you. Uh, Jose Carlos Rodriguez Linares. Present teacher. Thank you. Jose Francisco Peña Peña. Present teacher. Thank you. Jose Isaías Portillo Ramos. Jose Jovito Torres Amaya. Present. Thank you. Eh, Mayra Lorena Portillo de Perla. Eh, María Susena Ayala de Flores. Present. Thank you. Marta Estela Díaz Sánchez. No. Eh, Marta Ruth Hernández Reyes. Ah, no, perdón, Enrique Reyes. Present. Thank you. Marvin Joseph Ale. No, Salazar Alas. Person teacher. Thank you. Um, Nady Ibis Mendez Salveño. Present teacher. 
Thank you. Rafael Antonio Morales Martinez. Present. Thank you. Rebeca Estefanía Pereira Flores. Present. Thank you, Rodrigo Antonio Meléndez Morales. Present. Thank you, Rodrigo Daniel Meléndez Mayen. Present. Thank you, Rosa María del Milagro Pérez de Paz. I'm here. Thank you, Sandra Patricia Marino Moreno. Eh, Jensi Marlene León López. I'm here, teacher. Thank you, Zulma Beatriz Pérez Caltanos. Present. Thank you. Gracias, José Isaías. Ya vi su mensaje. José Isaías. Ah, ok, aquí está. Bye. Guys, thank you so very much for joining today. Ok. Sé que es el primer día. Es probablemente nueva información. La verdad es que yo estuve leyendo todos los temas. Y están bien bonitos porque sí son de avanzado. And they are very, very interesting. Y creo que lo que más me gustó es, chicos, el vocabulario que traen las lecciones. Así que, uh, please, if you have questions, write them down. Or if you have questions about the platform, write the exercise down, right? Si de repente, teacher, es que se me olvidó. No, aquí, mire, usa el bookmark. Cuando usted le clica al bookmark, ahí le, le aparece el, el, el separador y usted sabe que ahí se quedó. Okay. Así que I'm going to stop here for today, guys. But tomorrow we're going to meet. Así que nice meeting you all. And have a good night. And let's meet tomorrow. Okay. Bye bye, guys. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night, guys. Bye.